team keeping it real with retro claude a series <laughs> on living with a disability <laughs> i am in a lot of pain and i've been really ill this past week just with like an ordinary cold really annoying but uh yeah guess what i still just get sick like ordinary people too so it's not been a great start to September and I keep putting off starting this mm, stash busting in September vlog. However, it's nearly a week into September now and I still haven't filmed anything. So here we are. I have, however, been doing some knitting. So I'll show you what I've been up to. I was, of course, hoping to do some more aesthetic, pleasing cinematic knitting shots and instead you've got a really terrible phone close up of my face in bed but here we are um so i've been i've got a glove these are the falling leaves gloves by um dara uman uman probably got an umlaut and i'm making these in this um we are knitters Vanita or Finita, colour is cinnamon, it's a gorgeous colour. I'm doing this like it's a, my actual camera and it's not going to focus on it. <laughs> it's lovely soft yarn but it didn't wear very well. So I thought it would make a nice pair of gloves because they're not the sort of thing that gets a lot of intense friction. I've got me 2.5mm needles. And yeah, so I've knit my first glove got a weave in the ends obviously and they need blocking really to make the lace really show up nicely so far so good the only thing i think i've discovered i've discovered this about my hands having made several pairs of gloves now this distance on me it seems to be longer than the average person i have quite long fingers i also think like this part of me i need more length oh well time to make the second one i might tackle that today in bed i've also been swatching for the chevron uh, home fires jumper a uh, sort of instagram friend of mine emily kate she has a podcast as well actually uh, has been making this one and she's been posting on her instagram stories about struggling to make gauge so i thought i'd better make a gauge swatch for that one don't mean to rub it in but I think I've got gauge straight away. <laughs> but I don't have a tape measure up here and I'm not getting out of bed. So I think I'm going to pause that for now and start on the second glove. When I've been really ill and I've been uh, too ill to think about doing lace or fiddly gloves, I've been making hexi puffs. So um, I've always almost used up one of my leftover hand eye skeins actually so that's nice so yeah so far in september that's what i've been up to gloves swatches hexi puffs Tell me you have any without telling me you have any. Magnesium spray, melatonin, excellent cream. So I am doing a bit better today, which is a relief. And uh, I'm sort of taking it easy as a precaution, almost. And like, I can't really focus. That's how I always know. I've got my wheat bag on my back. My knitting, and this is the rib for the chevron jumper i made my sample and at first i was a little bit concerned that like these two colors there's not enough contrast but i actually think i quite like how subtle that is and it's going to be almost like an ombre um guess what i got gauge <laughs> guess i just um i'm a tight knitter maybe compared to most modern knitters or maybe i'm just experienced with vintage patterns so this is Cascades 220 fingering, colour 9619, god knows. I've got the gloves on the go as well, but because I'm working on the back of the hand now and there's a lace pattern, it's too much for the old noggin. So one by one rib, and I need 42 rows of that, 
so that's quite quite a long rib so I'm gonna sort of settle in with YouTube I think and just knit some rib for a bit basically so this was one of those things um when I made that three ply yarns video I knew I was going to have some oddments left and I knew I wanted to make this pattern so I bought more of, of this Cascades to use up the leftovers from that video so kind of counterintuitive in terms of the stash busting but um I did count this I'd already bought this before I made that grand tally uh, so hopefully this should get rid of quite a big chunk of my stash but I feel like it's going to be slow progress. part of my house you haven't seen before isn't it can you see all my medicines yes you can who knew being a youtuber was so difficult eh that's better now that's cute welcome to my kitchen i'm sorry this is going to be a, firstly a very short video probably and also not very interesting because um i just i've just had a really rough time in my health i've been in a lot of pain haven't been able to walk i haven't really wanted to film any of that and i haven't got a lot done in my previous installment I was like, oh, September, I'm going to use up loads of wool because I've been giving myself a head start. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. We are in real danger this month of the tally being one uh, because the only thing I've finished are my falling leaves mittens, uh, gloves, sorry, not mittens, <sighs> and they need a block. However, it is now that time of year in England where nothing's going to dry until next April, probably. So I'm reluctant to block them until I've at least got the central heating on. But I'm really pleased with them. They're so pretty. And I like to wear this kind of glove. I do have a pair of like fair arm mittens that I like to wear a lot as well. And I found those really useful during sort of the height of COVID precautions because they were easier to whip on and off and sanitize hands and all of that. Uh, whereas these, you have to do a bit of the old um, to get them off. The other benefit I think of knitting your own gloves is you're able to make the fingers the exact right length. So that's nice. The only one that's a bit long on me is the pinky finger, but I don't mind that. It gives me a bit of flexibility. So as far as free Ravelry patterns go, this one, I highly recommend. It knits up beautifully. The instructions are great. The only thing I've found, I think I might mention this earlier, I'm not sure, is that they're a bit short in this section. I could have lengthened that, but then I would have distorted my lace pattern. So that might be one of the things I try when I block them to kind of make them a bit longer there. Because, oh yeah, like, look at that. That's fine. That's great. <sighs> but yes, the damp English winter is upon us. I did manage to block my thrifty slip-on. It took three days to dry. And even then it still wasn't completely dry. But the other thing that I have achieved this month is I've been working on this chevron jumper from i think it's originally a patterns and baldwin and i bought the digitized version from subversive femme so yes we have a front and a back and they are seamed together and i have knit the neck band which was literally just a few rows of um plain knitting let's see if you can't get a nice close up there oh that's quite a good shot so you had to seam it up and then just knit two rows garter stitch and cast off i did a stretchy cast off and you also work a buttonhole there. It's a very small buttonhole. So like a lot of 1940s that are very close around the neck, like the one I'm wearing actually, ha, huh, yes. They have buttons to form like a sort of vent opening. Now I find I tend to be able to get them on over my head just fine and I have a very big head. So I kind of just leave the buttons done up. This one has a particularly long vent opening. So I'm wondering whether that's like a style decision. I don't know, I haven't got any buttons yet. I'm gonna need five buttons. Seems a lot. But yes, I also went wrong. This is the thing when you're knitting and your brain's not really in it. If you're not a knitter or if you're new to using knitting patterns, knitting is very repetitive. So quite often what they'll do for an instruction, say you're decreasing, they'll give you written row by row written instructions for how to do it once. And then they'll just say, repeat these rows twice or 10 times or however many times you need to do it. However, that's open to interpretation because do they mean 
repeat these twice more, as in you've already done it once, written out with the instructions, and then you do it twice more? Or do they mean do it twice as in two times? In modern knitting patterns, we've kind of managed to overcome this ambiguity. A lot of modern knitting designers, they put uh, two times more, or for a total of two times or something like that, or they give you the number of stitches if you're decreasing, so you know you're in the right ballpark. Vintage patterns, nada, nothing. You just have to know what you're doing or try it out and if it doesn't work, redo it. And so I, um, I got that one wrong. It said to do something twice and um, I did it twice and actually I needed to do it a third time. And as a result, firstly, when I came to join my shoulders, I had, I had too, too many stitches on the back and it's also four rows too short in this section. I did contemplate ripping it out, but at this tension, four rows is a centimetre and two stitches is not even that, like six mil, seven mil, something like that. So I kind of decided I was just going to fudge it. And you can see ever so slightly that my shoulder seams on the back, this is the back here, I've eased it in. So <laughs> it's a bit lumpy. I really do not care. And I did it wrong on one half and then I was like, should I rip it out? I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna knit the other half because you divide the stitches to do this vent opening. I just knit the other half to match the mistake I made earlier. Worked out fine. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna know. <laughs> I am now on to knitting the sleeves, which I am naturally doing two at a time because I am not uh, a glutton for punishment. So I've got to do 26 rows of rib on my number 11s, which are three millimeter. And then I have to continue this chevron pattern with my colours. However, as I'm using odds and ends, naturally things are a little tight on the, um, the remaining yarn. So the reason why I'm doing this in the kitchen to begin with is because I'm going to get out my kitchen scales, weigh and divide these so I can sort of plan and adjust the pattern if necessary. If, for example, I don't have enough of two but not one, I'll make all the sh stripes shorter, that sort of thing. But first of all, I've got to weigh all these and do all the maths and divide them up. So let's do that. Okie dokie. So this is the We Are Knitters in Nutmeg. We have 20 grams of that. This is Shashenmeyer, I think. Regia, ooh, only 15 of that, okay. This is Signet, I think, 17. Okay, so I have the least of this one. I've got my ball winder. So I think probably the easiest way to do this is crack up my ball winder and wind a little, wind a tiny weeny little ball. Are we getting anywhere? I tell you, since I bought one of these things and my Swift, I feel like such a pro whenever I use them. I'm like, yeah, look at me go with my fancy knitting equipment. What was the smallest one? So half of 15 is seven and a half. My scales aren't that accurate. Um, so we'll just have to estimate roughly. Okay, let's see how much this weighs now. 10 grams, so a bit more. Nine. <laughs> eight. Oh, eight. Seven. Seven. Now I think seven. Okay. Let's call that good. Oh, that's such a small amount. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this work. Ah. What I will say though, I was kind of skeptical about whether I needed a ball winder and a swift like this, but it has actually been really good in terms of like energy saving. So yeah, it turns out it was worth it. <laughs> and like, it's one of those things, asking somebody to crank a handle is a lot easier than teaching them how to wind wool without stretching it out if, um, if I'm not up to doing it myself. Okay, so let's double check. Seven. That one says nine. Okay, now it says eight, so we're not quite even, oh well. The good thing is as well, this is my first stripe. So if I don't have enough of that one, I can adjust from there on in. So this one was what, 17? Now it says 16. 16, oh I suppose because I'm holding this bit. This is probably a gram's worth, is it? No, um, okay. So half of 16 is eight, so. <laughs>
the sun's just unexpectedly come out. So, bowl of water, get these things in to block and hopefully they'll be dry before Christmas. <laughs> So here I am knitting away in bed and I just thought I'd update you because I finished my rib and I'm on to my colourwork stripes now and I just checked the pattern and annoyingly this first colour is the one I have the least of and it's the longest section of stripes. So there's more stripes in this colour than the other two colours in the design of the pattern. <sighs> Let's hope I have enough. So today is the 30th of September. It is 20 to 10 and I have finished knitting the sleeves on my chevron jumper which means the yarn counts towards September's tally. My hands hurt, my shoulder hurts, this probably wasn't a good use of my time and energy for what is essentially a completely arbitrary deadline but I did it. Yes, I did it. So it's the start of a new month and so it's time to look back on September and see just how much I was able to knit from my stash. It wasn't a lot, I only managed to get two things finished and one of them, as you can probably tell, was this thrift tee slip-on that I actually did all the knitting for in August and I just sewed up this month. So none of the yarn from this counts towards my totals because I've already counted it, but it is at least one less work in progress. The only th other thing that I was able to finish was these falling leaves gloves. I am really pleased with these. They are so soft. The pattern is so delicate and lovely. I have previously made a similar sort of glove style pattern, which was another free Ravelry pattern. <laughs> I'm a cheapskate, what can I say? And I wore those a lot and then I put them, <sighs> I left them in the pocket of a coat, which I then machine washed and they felted and they are still wearable. They're just a bit snug now. So they shrank just a little bit but I'm really pleased with these. I don't know how well that lace pattern shows up. Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. Um, I have blocked these. My previous complaint was that they were a bit short here and I have been able to stretch them a bit in blocking. So they do feel a bit more comfortable now. So all in all, I'm calling these a success. In terms of stash yarn, this was from, this was We Are Knitters Finita, Finita yarn. And I, uh, I have this much left. I haven't weighed it yet. So I'm going to do all the weighing and totaling up at the end. <sighs> so, yep, I'll be having to come up with something else to use the rest of this yarn. And so as you can see, one pair of gloves and this much leftover wool wasn't going to be a huge total for this month, which is why I worked so hard to try and get that chevron jumper finished. So I had knitted and blocked the body so you saw this previously, uh, I had knitted it, sewn up the shoulder seams and knitted the neckband. I quite like the colour scheme, however when it was laying out blocking my mum was like, hmm, that's interesting. And I do think it is a little bit like 70s curtains, <laughs> do, you know? do you know what I mean? Which I mean I'm cool with, but once you see it you can't unsee it. I finished this and it gave me two days to knit the sleeves and I was just able to do it. So here they are, I cast it off last night and as you can see this is one of the things uh, about why you should block your knitting. Can you see how like these chevrons are just not lying nicely at all and it's all sort of puckering. If you compare that to the body of the of the sweater which is you know wet blocked and pinned out and left to dry you can see that's so lovely and smooth and everything's lying nice and flat so um that's why you should block your knitting in case you were wondering i was worried because when i divided up my yarns the yellow stripe which is the first stripe i had the least yarn of and it's the longest stripe of this in the sleeves uh, but it was actually okay it turned out i had enough which meant of course that i haven't used up all my odds and ends here so I have quite a lot of the main colour left, which is fine. So I have those and then of course, because I divided up, divided everything in two, I've got like two balls of... <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> it's like never ending. Uh, I've got lots of bits like this 
left for all the other colours. Naturally, I still have to sew up the jumper and block the sleeves, but much like this jumper from last month, I'm counting the, the yarn in this month's tally because the knitting is done. And so I need to know how much yarn I have left to plan other projects. I've got my kitchen scales here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit here and weigh them as opposed to go to the kitchen because my legs hurt. I hope that's cool with you. You don't have a choice in the matter. I will set everything up and I'll load up my Ravelry stash so that we can do all the calculations and see just how much yarn I was able to use this month. So apparently I had 67 grams of this and I have 27 grams left, meaning I used 40 grams for the gloves, which isn't even a full ball of wool. I've got my notebook here. Oh, I also knitted a few hexi puffs this month, which I've included. Uh, so I used about a third of a ball of wool there and I've used minus 0.8 for the falling leaves gloves, taking us to 170.4. Okay, so let's see how much of this yellow I started with. Uh, so this is the Regia sock yarn, which is one of the ones I bought for my three ply yarns video. And I had 43 grams left over originally. So I had 43 gram grams when I started the chevron cardigan. So let's see where we're up to now. Five grams. So we used 38 grams for the chevron cardigan jumper. It took me a little while to figure out the most efficient way to do this on Ravelry to update the stash and it's actually to put in how much you used in the project and then it updates the stash. So we edit the project and I used, what did I say? 38. So then when I go on my Ravelry project now, it's updated to tell me I've got five grams left. Is that in focus for you? I hope so. So then this one was the signet. So I started with 44 grams and I have nine grams left. So I used 35 grams. I'm gonna have to call this yellow two. And I, what, what did I say I used? 35 grams? Yeah, 35 grams. <laughs> See, this is the thing. People think knitting, it's a really easy, relaxing hobby. Uh, it's all maths. It's all maths, I tell you, it's never ending. So then now this was the um, like nutmeg, I think they called it. Uh, oh, what's, what's that brand called? West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's 14 grams of that left. And we started with 50 grams. So we've used 36 grams of that. Right, okay. So then last but not least, we have all of this Cascades. So I have 39 grams of that left. And I started with 150. So I've used 111. Yeah, 111. Oh, apparently this shade is called Ember Heather. So now I just have to add up how much I've actually used. So 38, oh no, that's 28. 38 plus 35 plus 36 plus 111 equals 220 divided by 50 equals 4.4. Okay. Not as many as I thought it was going to be. Oh well, so minus 4.4. Conveniently though, that takes us down to 166 balls of wool. So in total this month, what's that? 11, five and a half. So that's the same as the first month, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I won't lie. I'm not thrilled with that result, but then it was a really tough month. And I think when I look at having all those odd bits of wool left, I'm really annoyed because I don't think of it as a reduction in my stash. I'm still like, oh, I've still got that orange and I've still got those two yellows left. Despite the fact it's like 15 grams of them or whatever, or nine grams, some of them. Yeah, I'm being too hard on myself. I know, I am. I am really pleased with that chevron jumper though. I really uh, enjoyed knitting it as well. It was nice to knit a sweater. I haven't knit a sweater like that or a jumper for quite a while, actually. I'm trying to think, when the what was the last 1940s sort of sweater I made? Let me check my Ravelry. So I, I knitted that green cardigan and I knitted the lacy yoke blouse. I don't know if I ever showed you that one. And when was that? April. Oh, so it's, it's still been quite a while since I've knit anything like that. So it was nice. It was nice to come back to it. Sometimes it's good to have a break. I just like knitting 1940s jumpers. You know, there's something really satisfying about them. If you haven't tried one, I recommend it. And actually, I mean, this pattern, there were a couple of issues like it kept telling you when you were sh doing shaping it would tell you to cast off say two stitches and then knit nine stitches before you did the decrease again to get the chevron pattern 
but it was including that stitch that you still had on your needle from casting off. And so really you had one on your needle and you needed to knit eight more and then do the decrease. And that caught me out a few times and I was like, oh, this is weird. So vintage patterns are always a bit like that. I normally finish these videos by doing a grand reveal of everything I've knit this month, but seeing as it's only a pair of gloves, should I still do that? Like I say, this is having its own video, so I don't really want to include it this month. M maybe I will. Maybe this pair of gloves deserves its own photo shoot. You know, I believe in you. <laughs> I will leave you with the grand reveal of my falling leaves gloves.